Coming up on The Shield, we have a recap of Homecoming Week here at Valpo. NVU TV traveled to Valplaza last weekend. We have the latest on this one-of-a-kind community project. And I'll let you know what we can see this beautiful fall weather continue coming up in the five-day forecast. You're watching The Shield here on VU TV. Thank you for joining us here on The Shield. I'm Brendan Johnson. And I'm Lynette Grant. And well, Lynette, alumni representing classes from the most recent graduating classes to the 80s, 70s, and even earlier came back to campus to relive and cherish their golden days here at Valpo. VUTV assisted the communication department's capstone class and where grads talked about how important the Career Center was in their post-grad success. I think that getting involved at Valpo is something that's really important, um, not just getting good grades, I think really getting involved with like student organizations, Greek life, having internships, things outside of the classroom are really important to kind of develop yourself professionally and personally and then to gain those skills that are going to lead right into um, a professional environment. And so I think that's kind of the first step. Beyond that, once you kind of know what you want to do, I would really do your research, know what you want to do what you can expect from a position like that and then also research this sort of companies that you're going to be applying to um, because nothing impresses an interviewer more than like telling them something about their company that they didn't even know in like response to an interview question so I think that that's really important but then even beyond all of that stuff I think just remembering that you are a student um, things will fall into place as they're meant to so not stressing out too much about the future and everything. I know with like the economic situation and people, it can get pretty daunting, but I think that remembering that you are a student and just enjoying this time while you're still here. For prospective students, make sure that you're doing something you love. Don't do something because you think it's gonna help you get a job. Do something that you're really passionate about. Like, medical student did not major in biology. English and history, I like to read. So I did not major in biology. So just make sure that you're doing something you love and then using what's available to you. The timeless tradition of crowning the homecoming king and queen took place just before the homecoming football game on Saturday. Joined by UPC staff members and 2011 and 2012 homecoming king Jason DeFazio and homecoming queen Alex Mulchin, they crowned this year's 2014 homecoming king and queen. King Michael Mysick, representing Lambda Chi Alpha, and Queen Amanda Mulchin of Kappa Kappa Gamma talked with VUTV's very own Ricky Cody immediately following their placement into Valpo Royalty. I go to every sporting event and I love the students here, so. I mean, it's a great honor to be homecoming king. You know, I absolutely love Valpo. It's really great. Uh, it's great that such a small house can really get out on campus and just, you know, keep going and do as much as we can. Last year, Valpo's track and field team did not have a place on campus to call home. But over the summer, a lot of hard work went into making sure that they had a place to call home. Our very own Parker Gatewood has more on this story. After all the construction over the summer, Valpo finally has a home track. And on Saturday, at halftime of the homecoming football game, the new track was dedicated to Warren G. Hoger. Hoger, who was a member of Valpo's track team in 1953, was inducted into the Illinois Track and Cross Country Coaches Association Hall of Fame in 1983. Hoger was accompanied by President Heckler, Mark LaBarbera, and head coach Ryan Moore in giving a speech on what the dedication of the track meant for the school. The new track features high jump, long jump, triple jump, pole vault, and steeplechase areas and gives Valpo the ability to now host NCAA Division I track meets, which includes the Horizon League Outdoor Championships. The Crusaders are scheduled to host the facility's first outdoor meet in April of 2015. For The Shield, I'm Parker Gatewood, VU TV. In addition to other homecoming activities, the Martin Luther King Arboretum was visited by alumni and former faculty and staff, as well as Brian Johnson, Director of Campus Ministries, for a blessing of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. tree. And continue your blessings to us through the bounty of your creation. We pray for this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
And over the past week, Valparaiso has been rebuilding Valplazo, the next generation. VUTV was there to help with the construction, and news correspondent Amy Vander Hayden has more. From the planning that began over a year ago, to the construction that lasted just a week. And now, the completion of Valplazo, the next generation. Back in 1984, Valparaiso Community built the Valplazo Park here in Valpo. 20 years later, the community is back to build Valplazo, the next generation. In just one week, a park that had been around since 1984 was transformed into a brand new facility for the next generation of Valparaiso. This is the 20th anniversary of our 1994 build. Actually, it's the 20th anniversary of the 1994 homecoming, Valparaiso University homecoming as well. Just so happens we picked the exact same week to do it. Um, we have about 500 people a day coming out to help build this playground. It's really an extraordinary playground. Um, it's not only about a wonderful product, but it's also about a process of bringing a, a real diverse group of people from the community together, from young to old to seasoned folks to university students to high school students, everyone coming together to uh, do something um, important for kids. The sense of community was evident through the building process as over 2,600 members of the Valparaiso town had a hand in building the playground, even those who don't come from a construction background. Just the people that I see, I mean, it's just like, oh gosh, I, in real life, he's a this or that. You know, God, how does this person find the time to do this? Children as young as 10 years old were able to help in the construction, and a panel of students were also able to design the park and choose the equipment that they wanted. Even the theme of the park represents Valparaiso, having a Viking theme after the Valparaiso Vikings. The goal for the new park, to be a place for kids to have a safe place to play for years to come. For The Shield on VUTV, I'm Amy Vander Hayden. And still to come on The Shield, we are learning more about the American nurse who has been infected with Ebola. Plus, the protests in Ferguson, Missouri have sparked reaction in nearby Hammond. And the weather here in Valpo is going to be a high of 68 degrees today. That's still 4 degrees above normal for this time of year. Record high was set at 85 in 2008. Uh, more on when we can see the sunshine continue and when we will also see our cool down just coming up next after the break. You're watching The Shields here on Channel 82. For over 100 years, VU has trusted the torch for reliable and accurate accounts of campus happenings. And with an end of a century, we would like to say thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Velpo. We have been covering stories that will impact you both in print and online. For Player Spotlight and next week events, to the opinions you have, count on us as Valpo's most reliable source for campus happenings. Four-time winner of College Weekly of the Year, The Torch, home of the truth, celebrating 100 years of excellence in journalism. And welcome back to The Shield. We now turn to the Ebola crisis here in the United States. A nurse who was responsible for treating Thomas Duncan at a Dallas hospital has now tested positive for Ebola. As Mary Maloney reports, the latest infection appears to have occurred despite heavy precautions. CDC tests confirm a Dallas nurse is the first patient to have contracted Ebola in the United States. There was a breach in protocol, and that breach in protocol resulted in this infection. Healthcare officials announced Sunday that a female nurse who had extensive contact with Ebola patient Thomas Duncan has tested positive for the disease. Dr. Tom Frieden of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said the nurse's infection could have resulted from touching contaminated protective gear. The care of Ebola can be done safely, but it's hard to do it safely. It requires meticulous and scrupulous attention to infection control. Officials in Dallas said despite the infection, Healthcare workers are safe. We are confident that the precautions we have in place right now are protecting our healthcare workers. News of an Ebola case in the U.S. brought criticism of the response. We don't know exactly who's in charge. I don't think we are comforted by the fact that uh, we were told there would never be a case of Ebola in the United States, and obviously that's not correct. Frieden said the CDC is in the process of putting new safeguards in place to protect medical professionals and the public. He emphasized Ebola will be stopped in Dallas by making sure every case is properly diagnosed. That's how we have stopped every Ebola outbreak 
in history. That's how we will stop it in Dallas. I'm Mary Maloney, reporting. Over the weekend, protesters took to the streets of St. Louis and the towns of Ferguson and Hammond, Missouri to demand justice for the death of Michael Brown. The protests have been dubbed Ferguson October and Weekend of Resistance. Participants in the protests are angry about the police shooting deaths in recent months. They were also demanding for the arrest of Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson, who shot and killed Michael Brown. A grand jury began hearing evidence in the Wilson case on August 20th and have until January 7th to make a decision on charges. We now turn to the conflict in northern Syria between ISIS militants and Kurdish fighters. Overnight, nine coalition airstrikes hit ISIS targets in and around the border town of Kobani. Senior international correspondent Arwa Damon has the details. The Turkish security forces just moved us and those others that have been gathered watching the battle for Kobani further away from the city. There has been something of a relatively speaking eerie quiet throughout the day so far. There were fierce clashes that broke up, especially in the eastern part of Kobani this morning. Eyewitnesses reported two believed to be coalition airstrikes and then this quiet. One Kurdish fighter that CNN spoke to saying that their concern was that ISIS was trying to prepare itself for some sort of massive, significant assault. ISIS has continued to push through Kobani, gaining even more territory. One doctor that CNN spoke to who was treating both wounded fighters and civilians, saying that the YPG, the Kurdish fighting force, was bringing some of the ISIS casualties, the dead ISIS fighters, to their locations. He did say that among them was a young man, perhaps as young as 13 years old, he believed. ISIS continues to receive reinforcements despite sustaining reported heavy casualties from their stronghold of Raqqa and also from the province of Aleppo. The Kurdish fighting force alongside them, one brigade of the Free Syrian Army, continuing to reiterate that call for Turkey and the international community to establish some sort of weapons corridor. The Turkish military does have positions, does have its armor all along this border. It does have ISIS in its sights, but at this stage, not yet getting engaged. The concern is that those who are fighting against ISIS inside Kobani, well, they won't be able to hold out indefinitely. Arwa Damon, CNN, along the Turkey-Syria border. Oscar Pistorius was back in court on Monday for a sentencing hearing stemming from a guilty verdict last month for the death of his then-girlfriend. In September, Pistorius was found guilty of culpable homicide in the 2013 shooting death of Riva Steenkamp. Pistorius' psychologist took the stand to explain his mental state following the shooting. What we are left with, my, la my lady, we are left with a broken man who has lost everything. He has lost his love relationship with Ms. Steenkamp. He's lost his moral and professional reputation. He's lost friends. He's lost his career and therefore his earning potential and also his financial independence. The sentencing hearing is likely to continue over the next few days as both the prosecution and the defense will bring their arguments before the court. Pistorius was also found guilty by the judge on one weapons-related charge involving a shooting at a restaurant. Take a picture and it only lasts for 10 seconds. The privacy of Snapchat is what brought many people to the app. Now that privacy may have been compromised. A database of Snapchat photos and videos was reportedly released by hackers claiming to have at least 100,000 photos belonging to private individuals. The photos that were hacked were being stored by people using SnapSaved, a third-party app that allows you to store photos sent on Snapchat. Snapchat says its servers weren't tampered with, but that its users were victimized. Are we going to see the sunshine anytime soon? Angie Whitmire has your full Storm Shield weather forecast after the break. Stay with us. On a campus plagued with terrible weather, Valpo students suffer from boredom with no motivation to leave their room. They begin to search for free movies and stumble upon Valpo's new free movie streaming website, where you get unlimited free access to recent movies like Despicable Me 2 and Jobs at the tips of your fingers. So if you're feeling bored, then don't wait. Grab some friends, find a seat, and enjoy a movie on movies.valpo.edu.
And now, your dependable and accurate weather forecast with meteorologist Andrew Whitmire. Good evening, Valparaiso. It's been a gloomy past two days across the area, but the fall colors, though, we're going to be near peak here in Valparaiso. Near Lafayette, though, near Purdue, they're going to be in partial peak. So if you live anywhere within this area, you want to make sure to grab the camera out because we're going to get some pretty great pictures out there from the call colors that are just nearing peak season. Set up, though, here on the Storm Shield graphic for Tuesday, we'll have a low pressure around the area with that. Warm front just out to our south. Cold front will also be to our south. That'll all pass through the area by the time we get into Wednesday. But the showers and thunderstorms are still going to be across the area. We'll start out the future cast model here at Tuesday at 6 p.m. And you're going to see a couple of hit and miss showers throughout the day for your Tuesday evening forecast. We're going to be mostly cloudy as well. And we'll still keep that pattern going through Wednesday morning, though, as you're getting ready to wake up for school or head out to work, you're going to make sure to grab the umbrella or the rain jacket because, again, we're all going to see hit and miss rain showers throughout the daytime period. And again, it will be mostly cloudy throughout the day as well. Wednesday, as you get ready to come home from work or school and you're getting ready for dinner, we will see a couple of light showers still around the area. But overall, it's not going to be anything heavy, nothing severe, just a couple of hit and miss showers here and there. And by the time we get into Thursday morning, we will start to see the rain showers start to clear out of the area. Temperatures, though, thanks to the cold front, are going to drastically drop across the area. 66 degrees here in Valpo, 66 in Gary, and 67 up in Chicago to start your Tuesday evening off. Wednesday, though, as you get ready to go off for, to work again or go into school, you're going to want to grab the jacket because it's going to be 51 degrees here in Valpo, 54 up in Gary, and 53 down in Rensselaer. Wednesday, though, we're not going to warm up too much, though. We're going to be in the upper 50s throughout the day. That's, again, thanks to that cold front that has came through and has drastically lowered our temperatures across the region. Again, 57 in Valpo, 56 in Laporte. Warm spot is up in 60 up in South Bend and 59 over in Chicago. Thursday morning, though, you're definitely going to want it the jacket this morning, though, because we're going to not even reach the 50-degree mark Thursday night. We're going to be only in the upper 40s, so make sure to get in to grab that jacket before you head out the door or sweatshirt. This is going to be quite chilly, 48 degrees here in Valpo, 49 in Wheatfield, and 50 degrees down in Winnemac. So your storm shield forecast for tonight, 54 degrees, cloudy with a few rain showers off and on. Overall, not a big rain event, but again, we could see those showers off and on at times. Winds coming out of the south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Your forecast for tomorrow, 62 degrees. It's going to be cloudy with a few rain showers. One's better to the southeast at 5 miles per hour. And again, it's not going to rain all day. We're just going to see a couple of hit and miss showers at times across the area. Now for your Storm Shield five-day forecast. Again, we're going to have a couple of gloomy days across the area on Wednesday with a high of 62 and a low of 50. Thursday, it's going to be cool with a.m. showers, though, but that will clear out by the time we get into Thursday afternoon. High of 60 with a low of 48. Friday, it's going to be dry with 66 degrees. And again, that's the drastic cool that I've been talking about on Saturday and Sunday, where it's going to be cool with temperatures in the upper 50s, lower 40s as we go through Saturday and Sunday. So again, guys, the drastic cool that is coming. So it looks like the nice warmth that we've had this past weekend and in the past couple of days is going to go down. But we're finally going to see the sun again before the weekend, right? Right, yes. We will start to see the sun as we get into Thursday afternoon as those a.m. rain showers will start to clear out of the area. But again, we are going to see that drastic cool down come this weekend. So you're going to want to definitely make sure and bring the jacket with you if you have any outdoor athletic plans this weekend. All righty. Well, thanks, Andrew. Up next in sports, Parker Gatewood will recap a big sports weekend, including action in Crusader football, soccer, and volleyball. Stay with us for the full details. Hi everybody, I'm Dick Vitale of ESPN, and I'm on VU TV. It's awesome, baby, with a capital A. <laughs> Joining us now in sports is Parker Gatewood with quite an exciting weekend in the sports department. Parker? Brendan, it was a very busy and exciting sports weekend here in Valpo. 
Well, as you've already heard, this weekend was homecoming, and the Crusaders put on quite the show for the alumni. Men's soccer and women's soccer had fantastic finishes this weekend, and we'll get to them in a second. But let's start with the game that drew the largest crowd, Valpo football versus Missouri Baptist. With an estimated 4,771 in attendance for Saturday's game, the Crusaders faced a Spartans team that was in its first football season in program history. The Crusaders jumped right on the Spartans with a couple of early scores to make their lead 14-0, but Missouri Baptist fired right back with a touchdown to pull within seven. Although the Spartans showed signs of life early, the Crusaders would not let them score for the rest of the contest, and Valpo easily won the game by the final score of 55-7. to Brandon Hall had a spectacular game, rushing for 122 yards and finding the end zone twice in the Crusaders' second win of the season. On the soccer field, the men's team would face one of the toughest teams in the Horizon League as they laced up the cleats to take on Wright State. After two Raider goals and 50 minutes of chippy play, the Crusaders had their backs against the wall. But in the 52nd minute, Jordan Ayadud broke the match open for Valpo, making the score 2-1. to one. The Raiders held that lead for a little over 20 minutes, but in the 76th minute, Wright State's goalkeeper Tyler Blackmer was tagged with the red card for a foul in the penalty area, forcing the backup keeper to come in and giving the Crusaders a penalty kick. And for the second time in the match, Ayadud found the back of the net, tying the match for Valpo. The Crusaders would take the lead just a couple of minutes after tying it up and would not relinquish it from there. With the 5-2 win, Valpo improved to 7-2-3 on the year and 2-1 in the Horizon League. Well, we'll stay on the soccer pitch, but let's take it over to the women's side of the ball. The ladies have been playing some sensational soccer this year, and they were looking to stay undefeated in the Horizon League. The Crusaders matched up against Youngstown State team that was only two points behind Valpo in the standings before the match. And boy, did they prove to be a tough test. Much like the men's match against Wright State, this one was extremely physical with a combined 34 fouls between the two teams. The game was held in the balance for all 90 minutes of regular time and we had a 0-0 draw heading into overtime with about one minute left to play in the first overtime. The Crusaders had a free kick. The ball was sent into the box, and Grace Rogers came out amongst the bevy of players to send a shot into the net and win the match for Valpo. The Crusaders improved to 8-1-4 on the year, and more importantly, to 4-0-0, keeping them undefeated in the Horizon League. Rounding out the jam-packed sports weekend with volleyball, the Crusaders were away for two games, the only Crusader games on the road this homecoming weekend. One at Oakland and the other at Wright State, the ladies fell to Oakland on Friday in four sets and defeated Wright State in straights on Saturday. The volleyball team is now 13 and, or 17 and 3 on the year and 4 and 2 in conference play. That's going to wrap it up for sports this week. But remember to always stay updated on your favorite teams, coaches, and players here at Valpo. Log on to ValpoAthletics.com. Guys, back to you. Well, thanks, Parker. After the break, Andrew is back for a last look at your Velpo weather forecast. Stay with us. Good morning, Valparaiso University. What's a better way to start your day than with a new jam? And WVUR has just what you need. If you close your eyes Does it almost feel like nothing changed at all? And if you close your eyes Does it... If Daniel won't change your mind Baby, 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 right Broadcasting sports, news, weather, and music On air, online, and on campus WVUR is my jam. 
Andrew Whitmire joins us for a final look at your Storm Shield weather forecast. And Andrew, when is the sun really going to pay us another visit? The sun's actually going to pay us a visit, Brendan, over the next couple of days. We're going to have to wait until Thursday afternoon, though, before we start to see those peaks of sunshine start to come through the area. Again, Wednesday, 62 degrees with showers off and on, which is going to reach a low of 50. It'll be cooler, though, on Thursday, only 60 degrees. And again, we will have a.m. showers to start the day. Friday, though, that's when we can really see the sunshine come back. It's going to be dry, 66 degrees, our last nice warm day. But then as we go going through the weekend, it's going to be cooler. Middle 50s, though, is going to be the forecast, and we'll see low temperatures in the lower 40s. So again, guys, the sunshine is going to have to wait until we get into mostly the weekend before we really see the sunshine come back out. It's a beautiful time of year. It is a beautiful time of year. And our producer, Amy, since I'm wearing the color orange today, she keeps thinking that I look like a pumpkin today. I'm blending <laughs> in with a couple of my graphics. But I don't think I look like a pumpkin because it's in the middle of October. It's very now. fitting. It's, it's very, very fitting. Yes, We're almost to October, so I'm sure a lot of people are getting excited right. for that. And the colors are looking great, It is too, looking great, right? too. We're actually near, near peak as we get into the fall season. All right. Well, thank you, Andrew. And that's all the time that we have for you on this edition of The Shield. I'm Lynette Grant. And I'm Brendan Johnson. To get on-demand VU TV coverage, log on to youtube.com slash ValpoVUTV or like us on Facebook and be sure to follow us on Twitter at ValpoVUTV. For Andrew Whitmire, Parker Gatewood, and all of us here at VUTV, have a great rest of the week.